My name is Sam Marmestein. Welcome to the Los Olivos Wine Merchant and Cafe, where you not only get to taste great Central Coast wines and great Central Coast foods, but you also get to meet the winemaker. And today we have with us Fine Rice from Sunstone Winery. Thanks welcome, for Ryan. Me. You're welcome. I think it's very appropriate that uh, the day that we're interviewing Fine from Sunstone Winery, we have a solar eclipse going on at this moment while we speak so i think that's kind of cool that we're talking about your winery which is named after a sunstone and then the eclipse is going on at the same time uh so we just uh want everyone to know that september is uh, going to be sunstone month at the los olivos wine merchant cafe where all these wines are going to be 20 percent off we're going to offer all these wines by the glass and then buy-in is going to be actually pouring his wine on september 29th from 5.30 to 6.30. So come by and see by and talk about Sunstone Winery and taste some of these great wines that we have here. So uh, by and one thing that we always ask uh, our winemakers is that if you can take uh, one aspect of yourself that gets infused in your wine, so in one word or two words, what would you say that that is? Um, I would say grace. I always blend wines to achieve grace and I know that's a, a word that's kind of uh, hard to describe um, but for me it's it's a, a almost like poetry it's balance it's a little bit of all the things we talk about wines when we talk about a fine wine right. um, balance is achieved through blending different components of, of uh, varietal components together to achieve kind of that poetry in the wine and so when I blend wines, which pretty much every wine we make is a blend of some sort or another, um, I try and achieve that gracefulness that many old world winemakers speak of, which is like poetry. Fantastic. Now I know that when I first moved here 22 years ago, one of my favorite wineries to go to and one of the first people I met in the wine industry was you yeah. and came down to Sunstone and I was just amazed at how beautiful the taste room was and the grounds were and the kind of almost looked like a French chateau something out of out of Provence that was just kind of transported here into the San Inez Valley so yeah. tell us a little bit about you know how uh, the, this whole concept started and, and how the family got together and, and, and and put together a Sunstone Winery the way it is today, which is just a beautiful, beautiful place to go. Uh, well, my parents were highly ambitious people, and I'd like to say blindly ambitious, because when they got into the wine industry, they really had no idea what they were doing. Um, they moved to San Inez from the big city of Santa Barbara in 89, um, with the goal to put my sisters through the local high school system up here. And, um, it was a 25 acre property, or 55 acre property, 25 acres of grapes, and literally had no idea how to make wine. We were just <laughs> going to sell the grapes to local wineries, and, and uh, we had great friends in the industry kind of guiding us along, which is very Santa Barbara. Um, yes. The camaraderie here is what it's all about. Right. And Eli Parker, Fess's son, actually helped us make our first vintage, and, uh, and it was from there on that we realized we were the greatest winemakers in the world. <laughs> and we went to wine schools. Uh, my, my father took UC Davis uh, classes online and it was just, let's go. And, and the best school is really being in the trenches. Yes. As you know, in right. the culinary world, um, there's no better school than experience in the kitchen. For us, it was the same with winemaking. So uh, harvest after harvest, we started perfecting our style and understanding of the technology and the science. And um, and then from there, uh, we found ourselves with about 2,000 cases of wine off after our second vintage, and it was, hey, buy and get in the car and go to LA. We gotta sell this stuff. <laughs> yeah. So I, I literally <laughs> sold all the wine for the first five years out of the back of my truck um, to Santa Barbara restaurants, and I used to deliver here to the back of your restaurant in the good old days. Um, but my mother uh, was really the visionary behind the brand. She was the um, she's organic loved growing everything organic from when I was a kid. I was going out in the garden, pulling vegetables out, you know, and preparing them. And um, she showed me how to plant everything, grow everything organic since I was a kid. And so we planted the vineyard and it had to be organic from ground up. And so um, she was really the visionary behind the fact that 
uh, Sunstone is now the longest running organic vineyard in the county of Santa Barbara. Um, and one of the first ones, right? One yeah, first Sanford first. And, and us, we're, we were actually first. First organic vineyards in Santa Barbara yeah. County, that's yeah. right. CCOF, um, right. so and you had to be certified because otherwise you could just say it and it was, right. you know, not cert verifiable. Right. But for us, um, it was a family value. It was about being stewards of the land, being environmentally concerned. And, and so we built everything on the property, including the winery and the villa that's now there, made from mostly reclaimed materials um, and native stone from the property. And uh, that, that was what her vision was, is to kind of live bucolically, grow our own herb, or herbs and vegetables and, and grow fine wine and entertain. It yeah. was all about food, family and friends for her. So unfortunately, when my mom passed in 2010, right. uh, the family decided that they really, it was kind of a scary, sad place to be after she right. passed. And um, so my wife and I uh, decided to step in and take, you know, take over the day to day. And so now since 2011, Anna and I, and now my boys um, are involved in the business. Um, I oversee, you know, all the operations Anna right. oversees marketing. I oversee winemaking vine right. vineyards. Um, I hired an incredible consultant winemaker who, he's my wine doctor. Um, I've been making wine for over 20 years now, so I feel very confident in my skills and abilities. But when you have a, a guy who graduated top of his class in enology and viticulture, uh, worked at Kendall Jackson for 12 years, uh, head of their Oakville, you know, Bordeaux wine program. Um, I, I kind of tip my hat to him when it comes to perfecting what we're trying to do. And his name's Matt Smith, and he's just right. an incredible winemaker. Um, so he's elevated the brand and the quality of the right. wines that we're producing, and, and I'm honored to have him on my team. Fantastic. So, what kind? I know that back in the days, I mean, we used to sell uh, Sunstone Merlot by the glass, and we sold that was probably the number one selling wine that we had here at the cafe and the wine merchant. And then, and then sideways came, yeah. right? And then people stopped drinking Merlot. Right. Right. And, but now Merlot is kind of coming back. Yeah. In fact, my uh, wine director told me that she was trying to order Merlot and it was all sold out. Mm -hmm. So, which is interesting. So what what uh, uh, varietals are you guys concentrating on now? Is it still the Bordeaux varietals and, and some, some Rhones like Syrah and Viognier and so forth? So Rex Pickett formally apologized to me for that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he gave me a, a hand authorized, <laughs> off, you know, signed book saying, "Buy and I hereby apologize for <laughs> bastardizing the Merlot variety." Um, I haven't accepted his apology yet, but um, I, we ended up having to go to blends and doing Bordeaux blends because uh, Merlot was a bad word after 2003, um, and we were the Merlot of Santa Barbara County. Yeah, um, uh, the largest Merlot producer in the county of Santa wow. Barbara. And so we uh, we had to kind of change up our game plan, and we went from Merlot to Bordeaux blends, uh, m majority Merlot in the blend, of course. Right. But we named them fanciful names like right. Milestone and right. Arrows, right. and and that really kind of helped um, us get through a very difficult time when the consumer had this preconceived notion of Merlot is is the dump bucket of wines. Right. Um, and so, so now Merlot is absolutely trending again. Wow, that's great. People realize that um, that Miles at the end of that movie was actually drinking Merlot and <laughs> didn't right. know it. That's right. And uh, and also that you know they understand uh, as the millennials are getting more and more involved in the wine industry, they're realizing that Merlot is a beautiful, versatile variety that goes really well with food. Yes. And uh, and uh, uh, so it's coming back, and and it's amazing in our tasting room. We're being asked more and more for it. That's great. Um, so we're bottling more and more Merlot. Of the 25 acres, 18 is Merlot. Wow, it's quite a bit. So. Going forward uh, with Sunstone, where do you see the winery going? Are you going to kind of be semi-retired, and the kids are going, boys are going to take over, or how? Gosh, that I hope work? so. <laughs> they better hurry up. <laughs> um, Miles just started high school, and uh, he's more of the left brain of the two boys. Mason is our creative. Uh, I'd say he's going to be a chef or perhaps a winemaker. Um, he's more extroverted and likes to work at the front of the house, and whereas Miles is more of the, the uh, introverted scientist. So he does all of our lab analysis during harvest um, before school. Wow, and that's great. Yeah, he'll go and pull all the lots and do pH and TA. And, wow, nice. And, and then reliably, actually. Wow. Um, so, um, 
I, I see them in the future working very well together because they don't have common interests and I could see them working uh, collaboratively quite well. Milestone is actually named after Miles and he, he blended this um, oh, he with us. So, right. you know, of course, uh, we kind of show him the way and then he finalizes it with a choice of four or five different selections. Um, but they love, they love being a part of the process and I include them in it because I, the more you start, the earlier you start them out and smelling and tasting, the more developed their palates are going to be when right. they're 20, 30, 40 years old. So. Right, yeah, exactly. I know that, uh, and they have they have an interest in it. It's something that they're interested in and they want to do. I know when my boys come out, they'll like kind of help with the harvest for like 20 minutes and then go back inside. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's yeah, hard work. It's hard work, yeah, exactly. Um, is there anything um, about Sunstone that, that people don't generally know that, uh, that you would like to tell our audience something about Sunstone they don't know or something that you're proud of there or uh, yeah. things that are not commonly known mm -hmm. about Sunstone? Well, if they haven't been there, the magic of Sunstone is the place, yeah. without a doubt. Um, as you said, it is absolutely a beautiful, sacred site. Um, it's one of the most visited tasting rooms in, in the county. We see over 40,000 visitors a year. Um, but we've expanded the facility so much that it really doesn't feel like we're being overly impacted and we turned away buses and so forth. So it's really more intimate. Uh, lots of private spaces, uh, especially outdoors. Right. And um, so really the, the location, the destination is, is really what it, the, is the magic of what we offer. Um, coupled with, of course, fine wine, world-class wines and what I consider to be the best hospitality experience in, on the Central Coast. Um, we've invested heavily in our team. We have uh, Double Level Som as our tasting room manager, and he's training everyone to be first level. So everyone's wine knowledge is extremely good, and and you you sense that it's not just a, someone pouring. This is our Merlot. This is our Syrah. There's a very deep, meaningful conversation that happens with the customer. So the experience is really what the magic of our brand is. Yeah, when I went there, it just seemed like the staff was very knowledgeable and very friendly, you know, really nice people there. And if you haven't gone to Sunstone and experienced Sunstone, I would highly recommend going out to Sunstone, doing a little wine tasting, maybe buy a few bottles of wine and, and just enjoying enjoying the place. It, it's just a beautiful spot uh, for your Thank winery you. there. So uh, congratulations. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, cheers.